Today's wisdom is going to be Surah Al-A'raf, verse 199. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with a beautiful summary of how he should deal with humanity. Allah says, خُذِ الْعَفْوَ وَأْمُرْ بِالْعُرْفِ وَأَعْرِضْ عَنِ الْجَاهِلِينَ Ya Rasulullah, you take the path of forgiveness and graciousness. خُذِ الْعَفْوَ You take the path of forgiveness. And وَأْمُرْ بِالْعُرْفِ Command and preach what is good. وَأَعْرِضْ عَنِ الْجَاهِلِينَ And turn away from the foolish and ignorant people. This three phrases or these three phrases summarizes the wisdoms of how our default should be when it comes with dealing with mankind. Allah created mankind to be always at trouble with one another. Allah says in the Quran, وَجَعَلْنَا بَعْضَكُمْ لِبَعْضٍ فِتْنَةً أَتَصْبِرُونَ We have made groups of you to be tests and trials for other groups. And so it is, we don't get along with our friends and relatives at times. Sometimes the husband and wife fights. Sometimes our colleagues, we are not talking to one another. Sometimes brothers are not speaking to brothers. Such is the reality of mankind. And Allah commands the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, you should always try your best to be the better of the two. How so? Khudil Afu. You take the path of forgiveness. Let your grudges go. Let your heart be pure. If somebody says something you don't like, if somebody harms you or hurts you, if somebody has done something that offends you, try your best to let go. Khudil Afu. You take the path of Afu. What is Afu? Afu means you wipe clean. You have a clean slate of the names of Allah, Al-Afu. In the last 10 nights, we're going to be saying, Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbu al-afu. Afu means to wipe it away. So Allah is saying to the Prophet ﷺ, don't hold those grudges. Don't always be bitter. Khudh al-afu. Take the path of letting go and wiping away. Now, before we move on, there are levels of afu. And it is important we mention this. The lowest level of afu, the lowest level, this is you do not take vengeance in this world, but you expect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward you in the next world. So you forgive partially. In this world you let go, but in your heart you will hold, say, I'm, I want my haq on the day of judgment. And this is done for the enemies of Islam. If you cannot retaliate, then you in your heart you say, I will get it on the day of judgment. And even evil people, very evil people, you're not really going to forgive completely. You will say, oh Allah, in this dunya I cannot do anything, but on the day of judgment I want my full haq. This is the lowest level of afu. You don't do something foolish. You don't retaliate. And the Quran mentions in the early Meccan phase, the Prophet was expected to do afu to even the jahileen of the Quraysh, to even the mushrikeen. You can't do anything. Afu does not mean you forgive forgive and completely ignore. Afu means, Ya Rasulullah, don't worry. Allah will deal with them. In this dunya, you try your best to deal with them in a manner that you don't hold that grudge. So that's the lowest level. A better level than this, and that is, you forgive genuinely for the sake of Allah, but you don't really repair the friendship. It hurts you, but you let it go, and the friendship is not going to be as it used to be. This is the second level, and it is a decent level, and it is something we aspire to, that you don't hold a grudge, but still, because of what happened, perhaps that mending is not going to take place. And this is permissible, and it's not problematic. The highest level, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَزَاءُ سَيِّئَةٍ سَيِّئَةُ مِثْلُهَا فَمَنْ عَفَى وَأَصْلَحَ فَأَجْرُهُ عَلَى اللَّهِ highest level you forgive you clean your heart and then you make up for that fight you come back to your friendship you come back to that brotherhood the way that it used to be that is the highest level whichever level you choose it depends on the circumstance and the context but the default for the believer they don't harbor grudges now there are exceptions to this rule those exceptions generally apply to evil tyrants to those who are in the name of Islam for the sake of Islam they hate you those people then you keep in your heart on the day of judgment and if you can retaliate in this dunya as an empire then that's a separate reality but 
on an individual level and between Muslims the default is Afu and Allah loves Afu and Allah loves those who practice Afu and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recommended Afu to the Sahaba even to Abu Bakr al-Siddiq when somebody badmouthed his own daughter Aisha radiallahu anha Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed in the Quran don't you want Abu Bakr to forgive you so if you forgive him I shall forgive you so Afu is the default between Muslims Khudil Afu number two you command what is good so afu is in the heart commanding is in the tongue the higher level than the next level you have to be a role model of good and you command other people to be good as well don't just exemplify good in your life preach good to others be a role model effect change Islam is not just about your individual personal worship. Islam is also about affecting change in society. You practice forgiveness. Then you preach what is good. Then turn away from the ignorant folks. Not only do you practice you, what you preach, you demonstrate that by in your life. Do not causing more friction. Do not bring about fitna. The believer does not cause drama. The believer does not increase fitna between people. The believer does not get involved in street brawls and, and, and personal polemics or politics of a vulgar nature. The believer is dignified. The believer walks away. The believer does not come down to the level of the ignoramuses. Allah says in the Quran, وَإِذَا سَمِعُوا اللَّغْوَ أَعْرَضُوا عَنْهُ When they hear people vain talk, fighting, doing ridiculous things, they turn away and they say, لَنَا أَعْمَالُنَا وَلَكُمْ أَعْمَالُنَا we have our lifestyle and deeds. You have your lifestyle and deeds. Salamun alaikum. Peace be unto you. La nabtaghil jahilin. I have no desire to be with the jahil people. The believer does not come down to the level of the jahil, the ignoramus, the fool. The believer remains dignified and at the higher level. Notice, by the way, these three commandments. The first begins in the heart. Then it goes on to the tongue, and then it is manifested in the actions, and such is Iman. It begins in the heart, it goes to the tongue, and then it is manifested in actions. Also notice, all three commands deal with you. The response is not mentioned because you are responsible for yourself. You're not responsible for other people. Allah reminds us, you do you what others do. Allah is not going to call you to task for what they do. You in your life, practice forgiveness. Have a clean heart. In your life, try to be a role model. Preach what is good. In your life, do not cause drama when people are doing negative things, evil things. Turn away, walk away, and do not exacerbate any situation. Be dignified in your heart, dignified in your tongue, dignified in your akhlaq. That is the role model of the believer. This ayah concentrates for us, summarizes for us the beauty of akhlaq. Islam is not just about rituals. Islam is not just about aqidah. Islam is not just about sharia. A part of Islam is akhlaq as well. And in this ayah, we are summarizing the beauty of akhlaq. Begin with the heart. Have a clean heart. Do not hold grudges. Forgive as much as you can. And especially forgiveness within family. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, O oh, you who believe, some of your spouses, they do things that are going to hurt you. They're enemies unto you. Sometimes they do things they might be even become enemies. What does Allah say? Fa'fu wasfahu. Right? Forgive. Turn over a new leaf. Just Ignore it and move on, especially between families. We must try our best to practice this model of forgiveness. And even with friends and all Muslims, have a clean heart. Preach what is good and do not get involved in that which is negative. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to practice these wisdoms. And we will continue insha'Allah ta'ala. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصم ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر ولتكملوا العدة ولتكبروا الله على ما هداكم ولعلكم تشكرون 